Welcome to the Massage Therapy Podcast. I'm Heather Rivers, Registered Massage Therapist. And I'm Nicole Andrews, Registered Massage Therapist and Contemporary Medical Acupuncturist. We're colleagues with almost 13 years of combined experience and small business owners who have a passion for health and wellness. So grab your cup of tea, kick up your feet, and enjoy today's episode. Today's episode is part two of a two-part series on to have a boss or to be a boss. Without further ado, we'll jump right in. Um, I don't know. Did you want me to talk about the clinic that I worked out right before? Um, yeah, I guess I could talk about it. The one that I worked yes. right before um, uh, opening up the one, because I think that's probably the most interesting yeah. one that I... <laughs> so I worked at a great clinic. Um, they were fantastic. So I really loved working with the chiropractor. It was a husband and wife team. Um, uh, they had another RMT who was working there. She'd been in business for like 17 years or something like that. It was a second career for her. So she was a little um, older um, and stuff like that. She was established. She was feisty. I love her. Um, <laughs> and so I worked there. Um, but when I started there, um, I was coming off leaving another clinic that had some sort of like, that was also an interesting leave. So I left a cl- the first clinic I started working at here in um, Oshawa over uh, sort of like a business issue. Mm-hmm. Um, the clinic owner and I um, sort of didn't see eye to eye on a problem that they had. The building, um, actually that we're in, <laughs> the building was having the roof worked on and the clinic itself um, wasn't informing clients before they came in that the, the roof was being worked on. And mm-hmm. it was really, really loud. You can imagine, because we're on the second floor. They were literally yeah. above us. So the clinic was loud, smelled like tar, and um, there was a hole in the closet in the treatment room I was in, and it was December. It was freezing. Oh so um, it was sort of like they thought that I was just telling people when they came in. I felt it was expected that they would tell people on the phone when they booked that they were having, we didn't know which days the work was being done. We didn't know if that day was going to be loud or quiet, um, but they didn't want to not, they didn't want to tell clients because they didn't want them not to book. They don't want to miss out on income at the busiest time of year because of this. Um, So I understood their point of view, but I thought that was ridiculous and you can't put money above your patient care. That doesn't make any sense. That didn't jive with like my own morals and like my values of like how I run it. So we lived out, ended up being, I was like, this is, we're not doing this. Like I'm leaving. Um, So I found another clinic, wasn't too far away. And uh, I started there and I had to kind of... Had to really bargain with them in the beginning on a contract they wanted a 50 50 split oh my god and i'm like i've been in this how long would it have been six mm-hmm. uh, four five five years something like that and i was like i'm worth way more than 50 that is the lowest mm-hmm. percentage split i've ever been offered and it's not even my first go around yeah so i was like absolutely not so um we sort of hashed out a contract that I started at 60, 40. And then again, I used the, when you, I hit a certain amount of revenue for two straight months, I can move up to 65, 35. Okay. So we wrote that in. So this is a lesson for contracts. I also had asked that when I hit a certain amount, another interval for two months, I could do 70, 30. Now the clinic owner said, yeah, yeah, we can talk about that later. Didn't write in the contract. So Somebody listening, if you want something, make sure it's written down in the Mm -hmm. contract. Um, I also suggest you have somebody else look at the contract. I mean, I did have someone else look at the contract, but um, I will get into this as we go when I talk about this. Um, The contract was a complete and utter mess. Mm -hmm. So um, really make sure you get clarification on a contract. And if you... If you want something, if you want like more percentage, if you want them to include like laundry or um, include processing fees, like make sh- have the confidence to hash that out in the beginning. Cause I'm telling you going back and trying to negotiate later literally leads to disaster um, mm-hmm. completely. So anyway, so I start there, that was the contract, all of that kind of thing. Um, I eventually hit, I think it took me a year um, or a year and a half uh, to hit that first benchmark, um, which if you remember from the way back in the beginning, it took yeah. me seven marks to hit two. Um, so that was quite different. I thought I was going to hit a lot sooner, but it's just different market, 
there was mm -hmm. more RMTs. After me being there a little while, they did bring on another RMT who was brand new, didn't have any clientele from anywhere, whereas I had established myself in the city already. So um, I kind of felt like that was sucky, but it is what it is. It was okay. We all worked out fine. They were great. Yeah. Um, and then nearing the end, um, I had taken, started taking my acupuncture. So this is very much at the end. So um, in that last sort of like portion, um, so my contract would have already ended. So I had, a, I had signed a three-year contract with them. Um, so when I had finished the, because uh, I started my acupuncture in the February and it ended in the January, I started my acupuncture. And through that, I had sort of realized that I wanted to implement my acupuncture differently um, then they sort of did, they wanted to charge for it, that kind of thing. Um, and I also had started a negotiation because my contract was ended for a bigger split because mm -hmm. I felt I'd been there. There'd been some RMT turnover. I had gone from like the lowest person on totem pole to the most experienced, busiest RMT on the totem pole. Mm -hmm. um, so I just felt like I was worth more. And I was bringing this whole new modality into the clinic that they can now advertise. It would bring a different clientele in um, with that is just more exposure. So I felt mm -hmm. I was worth a little more. So in the negotiation, um, I won't get into the specifics, but um, I ended up not feeling I was being heard. Um, mm -hmm. I started feeling as though um, I wasn't getting what I was worth. And I understand their point of view that they were running a clinic. Clinics are ex can be extremely expensive. You can have a lot of overhead. Um, we don't as RMTs have a ton of overhead, I don't think. No. Um, but chiropractors do. And when you're running a multidisciplinary clinic, there's lots of things that come with that. Um, but I just felt like it wasn't sort of working for me. So I gave them my 30 days notice that my contract that was expired, um, mm -hmm. my contract, that's, that's important to note that my contract had expired. So um, the 30 days notice that I felt was important because one for them as clinics, I didn't want to disrespect them. And two, I felt it was important to give clients mm -hmm. 30 days notice. Um, I very much respect of not abandoning clients. I very much think it is important that we continue care in whatever fashion mm -hmm. when you're leaving a clinic. Um, and it wasn't something I had run into until this particular place. Uh, so uh, in that, I had given them the 30 days notice. And they were quite upset by it. I think they were really caught off guard. I don't mm. think they expected an RMT who had established themselves for three years at a clinic and was booking four or five weeks out um, for at least evening appointments would just, yeah. just leave. Mm. Um, uh, what they didn't bank on is that um, no amount of busy could keep me happy at a place. And I just... Um, I needed, uh, it was a push. I needed, I really needed to be able to do my mm -hmm. own thing in my own place. Cause I was starting to get the, Oh, like, are you sure you need this time off? Um, are you sure you need 15 minute breaks? Oh, like, are you sure six hours or seven hours is enough? Because so-and-so I'm pretty sure they're going to start doing eight hours a day, which by the way, I went to that arm team was like, just so you know, their expectation of you is like eight hours a day. And he's like, that's never going to happen. Uh, so it started, it's, that sort of stuff started happening. And I'm like, what is happening to this? You know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. Place It just started not feeling like an environment that sat well with me. And it's uh, stuff like that that makes our community start to turn on each other mm -hmm. a lot because we start, you know, oh, they're manipulating us and or that person was manipulating us. Not all clinic mm -hmm. owners are, but the ones that are start putting a seed of doubt in our hearts with our colleagues and then that starts blowing up and then we have things like on our facebook group pages where yeah it's just absolutely calling and stuff happening that's not necessary at all we we need to work together and band together and absolutely so I'm glad support you each other the, yeah i'm glad mm -hmm. you went to that that um therapist and was like hey this is what i'm hearing and absolutely yeah and it wasn't like a like a backstabbing type of thing no. it was more so like i just want you to know because I had had close talks with this RMT and that kind of thing, because they were brand new. I sort of brought them in and all that kind of thing. I was like, I just want you to know, because I've been in this situation before where there's RMTs doing more or less or whatever, and they kind of pin you against each other to try to get as much rent of you out of you as possible. 
Um, he also, like, you know what I mean? Like, so just so you know, he expects you're going to do like seven hours a day and that you're not going to need like 15 minute breaks and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, if that's what you need, no, you're going to have to fight for it. Right. Um, Cause I had already started seeing, I was going to have to fight um, with this clinic. Like it, the groundwork has started been put where they started become this like really defensive talks as to, opposed to this like business Mm -hmm. transaction um and i think that happens too we all get so invested in the yeah. places we work and that's great it makes i think for a good clinic environment to be very close to the people you work with um but what happens is the personal started blurring with business um on their end and it started i think a lot of them started to feel like um well i, I know they started to sort of feel like i was trying to take advantage of them um and that they had built um, not realizing that what they had built had come from a lot of hard work from me. So although none of their advertising had my name on it when they put it out there, when that person walked through the door, the reason they kept coming back was because I was their therapist. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The reason they went and sought out to get like orthotics or Cairo or whatever I felt like other thing would help them was because I built a trust with a patient to continue that sort of thing yeah. um so i will say this it got really ugly i can't go into a lot of details of it because legal mm -hmm. <laughs> things it's yep. over now um mm -hmm. but i ended up having to go to small claims court with this clinic um wow. over some contract issues so what i learned the reason i'm bringing that up is because i learned a lot about contracts in this whole thing i actually hired a um employment lawyer contract employment lawyer from toronto cost me mm -hmm. a pretty penny but uh worth every dollar so um to explain to me um contracts and explain to me what is legally binding and why and how because i never wanted to find myself in this situation again where somebody was telling me that um, i couldn't work where i wanted to work i couldn't have a website i couldn't put my name out there i couldn't call clients i couldn't access files like so many things were happening and all of it seemed like it wasn't legal. It wasn't right. Mm -hmm. It wasn't in my contract. Uh, the contract had ended. You didn't renew it. So like what terms can you say like roll mm -hmm. over and what terms don't like, I really needed to know the precedents that were set already. Cause I know I wasn't the only person to ever gone through it. So, um, biggest thing I learned is, um, this comes up really often. I see it online all the time is the non-compete part of mm -hmm. contracts. So I will tell you, not that you should sign a contract and expect that even if it's in there that you don't have to abide by it. Um, that's not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But non-competes do not hold up here in Canada at mm -hmm. all. You basically, for it to hold up, have to have worked for Coca-Cola and know the secret recipe and take it to Pepsi. Yeah. So a long, 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 long time ago, there was um, a case where... Um, an actress worked for a acting company and she wanted to go to a different one. And the acting company said, you can't go work for them because you already worked for us. And now mm -hmm. you're taking the business. We would have got from you to them. Um, and basically the law said, you can't like infringe on someone's mm -hmm. ability to make an income yep. um, unless there is basis. And if there is basis, you now have to compensate this person for the fact that they can't find work. Right. 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 So that is real. That is true. Mm -hmm. Um, so any RMTs out there, if you're walking into a clinic yep. and they're telling you that if you want to work here, you can't work at the physio clinic next door, mm -hmm. that is not, not legal at all. Um, I mean, have to you can either compensate you for that time. Yes. Or, yeah. uh, that's it. That's literally it. They, that's it. they, they can't <laughs> do it. Um, they can't yeah. tell you where you can't work. They cannot give you a radius, which is mm -hmm. very common, which is what my whole, um, thing was about was that my clinic opened up within a, a radius of the other clinic which is funny is because I came from the spot that we're working in to them and they were okay with it but then when I was going back to where I came they from were. it was now not okay um so uh that's something that I think a lot of T RMTs need to like hear and be cleared mm -hmm. of non-competes mm -hmm. don't hold up Nope. Also, a lot of RMTs need to hear about like what your rights are as to like soliciting clients. So solicitation is different than a non-compete. Mm -hmm. So solicitation is um, seeking out business from a business you worked at to bring them to you. 
So in non-massage therapy world, if you work at like a sales company and you sell shoes and you go to a different shoe company, you are likely not able to call clients from that old shoe company. Solicitation, non-solicitation are legal things to have. Um, but because of what we do and because mm -hmm. um, of how healthcare in uh, Canada and Ontario works, um, it's not considered solicitation if you're following the rules that are set out by the RHBA and the, for us, the Massage Therapy Act and like by the CMTO. Yeah. So you are allowed to contact your patients um, if you are leaving a place um, to let them know how they can continue their care and how they can um, access or file. So a lot of clinics will um, post a sign or tell mm -hmm. you that they'll tell people that they can just continue there, that kind of thing. I've never trusted a clinic to do this. And like, I mean, I don't know if a lot of RMTs um, can say they do, but I never trusted a clinic to do this. So something I would have had in my contract to begin with would have been, if I leave, how we are sorting that out. Yeah. Um, so I didn't have that. So as I was leaving, I was like, I literally walked into my meeting to tell them like, here's my 30 days notice. And I had a letter written up. Mm -hmm. I had a letter written up and it said, um, and I was, I hadn't given it to anyone. I had literally been like, I'm giving this to you to read over. We can edit it. Whatever you don't feel is okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it basically was like, um, thank you so much for like, coming to me I am now moving um, you can find your your files are electronic so they'd be stored at the clinic you're the custodian so you can access them at any time mm -hmm. if you ever need any clarification on these files you can let me know we can get written consent for me to obtain them um, and then it literally said you can continue your care at the clinic with one of the wonderful RMTs or you can, um, I'm not getting out of the business in any way, right? It was, um, this or you contact. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can continue your business with me. And it literally left, um, a website. That yep. was it. Um, cause I felt like if someone to, had wanted to take the time to look at the website, they'd have to get then the rest of the contact information, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And so, and so yep. also the purpose of leaving the contact information was so that if somebody needed to contact me for a treatment plan because I did have people in MBAs um, mm -hmm. like to write them up like a summary or whatever of their treating practitioner um, they could contact me to do that because yeah. that are that we that is what we're mandated to um, yeah. like leave our clients to do so um, clinic didn't like that um, <laughs> They felt people would follow, which I understand. Like, I, I don't blame them for any of that. Um, but the reason this whole legal battle happened is they couldn't get me on anything solicitation. They understood that, that I wasn't soliciting anyone. I didn't actually give that letter to anybody. Um, we never came to an agreement on how we would let patients know. And I will say this. I asked my lawyer, what do I do? And he said, I don't know. <laughs> oh, my um, gosh. He consulted some people and he said, you can call whatever people you want. You have the legal right to call all of them because you don't feel that they are telling people. And I knew they weren't telling people yeah. um, anything. Um, but he goes, I don't know if you want to do that. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? He's like, I don't know if you want to do that. The line there is really foggy. You guys don't have anything specifically set out, but your regulatory college says that you have to, you have to let people know. Mm -hmm. um, so... I didn't really have any way. So I, I chose not to call anyone and I felt like I was abandoning people and I'm sure the CMTO would feel the same way, but I, I didn't feel that I would be backed um, by yeah. anyone if I called anyone. Also, it's not like I had a list of names. You yeah. know what I mean? I worked at the clinic. They did all the phone numbers. I might've had like 15 people's names in my phone. And they so probably like, weren't going to tell you that. Yeah. Give you that yes. information. They weren't going to give me the name of 600 people I'd seen in three years to be like, you can call people to say where you're going. Yeah. So um, I didn't, I chose not to call anyone. I didn't think it was necessary. I felt as though anybody who needed me for anything um, would figure it out. And I, I had faith in the clinic that if something legal happened, like if a client who had an MBA needed me to do a document or to go to court for them, that they would, they would let me know yeah. in that circumstance, they have to like the law yeah. like, proceeds them. So I felt that it was covered regardless. The bases yeah. were covered there. Um, so not to make a long story longer, um, <laughs> 
uh, through it all, um, it ended up, we ended up settling. Um, and uh, what I learned through it all, though, is that um, you really need to like read mm-hmm. um, and know what, what you're reading. My contract, I, to this day, and in the law eyes of my lawyer, <laughs> who mm-hmm. I hired, um, and any precedent set, um, I didn't do anything wrong moving yeah. from where I went to. Um, we settled because I felt in my heart of hearts that it was time to just end it. Um, yeah. I could have said no, and I could have forced him to take me to small claims court and defend himself. Um, but I never got into leaving that clinic because I had something against them. I never left that clinic because I had Mm -hmm. something to prove. Um, and I didn't think it was worth my time or their time Mm -hmm. or either of our money, um, to get any nastier out of it. Um, it was long. It, it literally took two and a half years. Oh my God. To, uh, hash it out. So I will tell anyone before you sign a contract, make sure you yeah. know what it, it says. Yeah. I would even say it's worth the money to have a lawyer look take a look it. at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so For going sure. out on my own, I decided <laughs> that if I ever brought anyone on, I was never going to get into anything like that. I never mm-hmm. wanted to have, um, an independent contractor, under me, I didn't want to do any of that. So Mm -hmm. uh, when I decided that it was time for me to sort of like give up some days and some time, um, I decided that a flat rent was Mm -hmm. what I wanted because I felt that besides the physical body of the clinic, um, somebody else deserved to be their own boss. Mm -hmm. And finding your own space can be hard. And uh, I got lucky and found a really great space that offers me and us, I think everything that you could yeah. really want in the basics for not like too exuberant amount of rent. So yeah, I thought I'd just pass that along. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's like why I ended up on my own. Like it kind of was like, I just mm-hmm. don't want to battle anyone for my worth anymore. Like I'm over that. Um, and yeah, here we are three yeah. years apparently in. <laughs> wow. And it's such a unique situation. And it's hard because I know I sometimes find myself oh, maybe tr- sounding a little preachy of like go out on your own and you know I crunch these numbers and tell people like how much like of a difference it is and this and that um but I know that this opportunity that you've given me is not out there for everyone and it doesn't like everybody's home situation is also different and um so I get why somebody might feel that they need to go to more of a 70 30 split but i'm gonna throw some more facts out just to support (laughs) yeah for sure my preach a little bit if you don't mind me switching um but so we talked about the 70 30 60 40 are your typical splits for working in a multidisciplinary so i did some math yesterday based on my first year back i've been with nicole i'm not even quite a year june will be a year and we're going to take this whole COVID aside and not include it. Dude. But, and I, um, I just looked at my straight operational expenses, um, not including any startup, anything I had to do there, just straight operational for my business expenses and looked at what I brought in, in my first eight, nine months, which isn't going to be my top dollar because I'm still, I'm still building up. My schedule isn't completely full. Um, but if you were to put my expenses and my gross income on a split, mm-hmm. my, what I would be playing quote unquote, the clinic is between four and 5%. Yep. It's, so it's I would, versus 30, 40%. 30%, 40%. So I essentially would be working on a 95, 5% split. Yeah. So if you th- really are thinking out there that you you need that clinic you need them you know to to help you build this and that and like you can't afford because that was always my thing like I don't know if I can afford rent you don't really talk about how much people's rents cost but then when you and I sat down and had a conversation you said look this is what my rent will be for you like what I'm going to mm-hmm. charge you I went what Why did I not do this sooner? And again, our situation might be different. Others, that rent might be higher. But still, I even did it with a a thousand, the math with um, around that thousand to twelve hundred dollars. And it still was still under 10%. Yeah. 
well under 10%, more, more like a 6% or whatever, right? Like it was, um, it's, it's a definite difference. And again, like some people might think, oh, but that clinic, they'll fill your schedule that all, you know, they'll fill your schedule. You better go with them. Mm -hmm. So I'm comparing my, the three clinics, the first one, the second one, and then now, Mm -hmm. and I, again, here comes the statistics monster. Um, (laughs) And I can, I think I can compare these all on a even playing field in the sense of uh, really, it was startup at the beginning, the first two years, and I'm still within my first year here. So it's really oh, deep. We're all at a starting phase. So my average weekly weekly clientele was 5.63 at the first clinic. Yeah. I saw less than six people <laughs> a week on average. Yeah. The second clinic, the average was 7.31. So still, like, <laughs> yeah, that's it. My first year on my own. Nobody, quote unquote, filling my schedule, doing it yep. all on my own. With I'm going to put a big asterisk and address the asterisk in a second. I'm at nine point four. <laughs> yeah. Like what? In yeah. Let's, that first year, fresh out of school, five point six three. I've almost almost doubled. Yeah. That in my first year coming back on my own when that shouldn't be happening because nobody's filling your schedule. And now I'll address the asterisk is that. Nicole does have a very large workload, large clientele, and because we kind of split up the week, so in a sense, we can be seen as almost part-time massage hours, even though I wouldn't say we're part-time. I'd say we're like 70 or 80% at the least. Um, Some of her clients do, they might come see me, um, and they have that opportunity there to them. So to say, like, I did it 100% on my own, that's why I say there's a bit of an asterisk. But it's still, all those other places, you can put the same asterisk on it. They were busy. On it because it they were busy. They had other RMTs. Yeah. And if they couldn't see the normal, they would see you. I was going to say that asterisk is one. But, like, like I mean, yeah. here's the thing. Like, I said, I definitely tell people, like, I, you know what I mean? Your name's right yeah. there at the front yeah. desk with mine. Like, it's not, um, and I tell tons of people, like, hey, like, if you can't get in my schedule, Heather is here. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, but no, it's the client choice like at no point am I booking people in with you, you know what I mean so yeah. they're coming to you so I'll still have that to yeah. you you know what I mean like your name might have come out of my mouth but it's like um and so there's still the decision to come and make that appointment mm-hmm. with me or do you know what I mean back in with you. yeah and, I'll be like you're waiting that back yeah, and forth have, right we have some that bounce back and forth um like I've had clients say like oh, I'm seeing you t- this week and I'm seeing Nicole next week we're perfect yeah. and like again Nicole and I we keep a separate system. All Completely. of our clients are yeah. separate. We, we use the same software to keep it unison for our clients, but they're completely different clinics mm-hmm. in that software. Um, and we don't talk about the, cl- the only reason I know that her clients come see me is because they tell me, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> we, we still get written consent. If somebody's like, Oh yeah, just talk to Nicole. She, she knows about X, Y, Z. Well, I say like, here, I'm going to give, you know, written consent from you so that Nicole and I can talk about your, your case or whatever. Right. And, yeah. and they completely like, yeah, where do I sign? They're okay with that. Yeah. But I, that was just something I the wanted numbers. to, to yeah. point out with numbers is that you don't, they, I don't know where this, I'm going to call it brainwashing comes from of you need those clinics. They're there. They're great. There's so much to learn from them. And for some therapists out there, they're perfect somebody who doesn't want to take on the marketing the business side of it and look after all of that Mm -hmm. maybe even the clinic will do their hst for them and they just literally want to show up massage and go home that's great so these clinics or the spas where you're an employee or the the massage chains those are your cup of tea and that's awesome that's great Mm -hmm. we need we need people in those spaces i just as I said before, I'm a control freak and I wanted to be in charge of my schedule. I wanted to see these numbers. I wanted to see the money coming in. I wanted to be the one that if there needs to be like a cut on the expenses and pull back and reel in on things that I'm in charge of that. Nobody's making that decision for me. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think all along I really needed the rent the, our situation is what yeah. I truly wanted and was the thing that was missing from before that piece that was always missing. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, again, I never thought I could do it because nobody really talked about, well, what's the 
average type of rent in the area so that I could ballpark. I could ballpark all the other figures onto a monthly what I wanted, but yeah. I could never find that rent number to know what's accuracy. I could only go off the splits. So yeah, and I didn't find that before I went on my own that a lot of RMTs or in school ever really talked about like what an overhead an RMT is you know what I mean Unless um you're doing your own home practice like out of yeah the house. yeah That's and time. so many um like so many clinics are always like oh it's so much money and I'm gonna say this because I love to ask questions at clinic story if any of the places I've ever worked at are listening to this like I totally like was mm-hmm. trying to figure out like all of your like numbers and behind the scenes because I truly just wanted to like learn like what does it cost to like advertise? And it'd be like, oh yeah, we spend $300 a month on yellow pages. And it's just like, oh, like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? And Mm -hmm. I mean, when you have more than one practitioner, things like light up that much more and stuff like that. Um, But uh, yeah, I remember being like, that's insane. Like I can't afford any of that. And then when I really started like looking at it, like out on my own, I'm like, oh no, like you can do like some free stuff here and there. Like you can have a free ad on yellow pages. Uh, You can have like a Google, like now, like, Google My Business is a free one. Like to do like Facebook marketing is actually not that much. You know what I mean? Like there's like yeah. so many inexpensive ways out there. Well, and um, now with social media, social media is yes. just free advertising everywhere. So even Claire. if you don't pay on Facebook, you can go use a like a Hootsuite for free and yeah. plan out your whole month's posts for for Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, exactly. And there's your marketing. Exactly. In, yeah. In year, like not to be like going into those details, but like in a year I've grown my Instagram following from zero to just shy of 600 in less than a year. That means yeah. like, and yeah, algorithms, not all 600 people are seeing all those things, but it, it, that stuff gets out there. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And I love that you have all that. Cause like, I'm really like noob when it comes to that. Um, even though I only started three years ago, like the way I went about it is, um, yeah, like I did Google ad, words facebook ad um i will say this um i'm really um uh lucky uh, my husband uh, when i decided to get on my own was actually working um in advertising <laughs> in sales uh so he gave me a lot of really great insight into like how to like market myself for like next to nothing and just like being smart about it which i think a lot of um uh, I think a lot of like just business owners in general don't have much smarts on. It's like a, it's like a whole oh, degree, yeah. right? Oh, so yeah. like marketing, it advertising, is. diploma, like it's a whole degree. So um, I think that's something that a lot of us don't have like a lot of like skills in. And I think we put a lot of, we just don't want to deal with it at all. Um, but uh, when you're bringing up the numbers, I just want to like go back when you yeah. bring up the numbers of how much like you started versus clinic. So I did that exact same thing too um, when I went out went onto my own because I was really curious. Um, and so what I was doing after working there for three years was somewhere around the like uh, 18 to 25 hour sort of like a week mark. It took me eight months to get to like 17 hours a week on my own. And I was making a hundred percent of it. Yeah. So what I did, that's sort of like what helped me push me out of my own. I said, okay, so what are my personal expenses? What are going to be my expenses at the clinic? Plus then I can extra like $400 a month of stuff. I don't even know they're going to cost me because mm-hmm. that happens. Yeah. And I was like, so if I take home 100%, okay, of the treatment fee, when you take out like in- income tax averages and mm-hmm. stuff like that, how many hours a week? do I need to make to pay my bills? So for me to pay my bills at the other clinic, I had to work about 15 hours a week for me to pay my bills and the clinic bills at on my own. It was like 10. Yeah. It was like, how can I work an entire day less five yeah. full hours less? You know what I mean? Like there's no way that and be that... running my own and have all these yeah. expenses that everybody's, Oh, but it's the expenses. Like, so it's it was, really not, it doesn't equal out the same. Um, no. uh, so it was pretty crazy. Um, yeah. so I guess if anybody really wanted to do the math there, you could figure out how much I was making at that clinic and yeah. how much they were taking, which is fine. Yeah. It was, a, it was a lot. Um, yeah. but I will say this. So it, to take away some of, I get, think the bias of like us saying work on your own. If I was to start now, if I were to like go back, and start a brand new now I think I would probably work part-time at one of those massage chains now hear me out this is why I say that because for a long time I had a really hard no for them and I hated them and I thought they were the beat like just gonna ruin us and all of that so the reason I say that now 
is because I think they actually commentate compensate their therapist pretty well. So I think that's good for us. They've, I think they've set a pretty decent benchmark for what RMT should be getting from what I can at least see from like massage addict and um, okay. specifically. Yeah. So they seem to compensate their RMTs pretty good. Um, so I think that's nice. Um, Cause I actually looked into it at one point when I was looking, when I was at the other clinic and they were going to make, when they did a full massage hour, they were going to be making only like $3 less per hour than I was making, but they got an hourly wage because they're employees. Oh, so when they yeah. weren't doing massages, they were, they were sure. getting, they were still getting paid because they were doing front desk work. Fun fact, when I wasn't doing massages, I was answering the phone because mm. they had a part time. So I was like, this doesn't make any sense. And I'm only making two or $3 per treatment more. And mm-hmm. right, like it didn't, it didn't really equal out. Yeah. So I think they compensate their RMTs pretty well. I don't know if that's changed by the way, the hourly wage, don't quote me on that, but mm-hmm. it seemed that way. So, um, and I think it is really good for an RMT to get their hands on as many brand new human beings as they can in that first few years. Yep. Um, every time you have to do a, a consent, every time you have to do a health history intake, every time you have to do an assessment, any of those things I think is good. I think it's really good to recognize that when you're first starting out, it's almost like you're kind of just doing your massage clinic every day for like the first year. Like you're kind of just like remembering to check boxes. Like, did I do this? Did I get the whatever? Um, So I think I'd probably start out at a clinic because I think I would learn a lot about business, right? Mm -hmm. Because working on a business chain like that, they like scale everything up. So their advertising, their branding, their marketing, like their software, like all of that. Um, has to run so smoothly for it to actually work. So I think Mm -hmm. that'd be a really cool learning opportunity on top of the fact that you would really get a lot of hands-on actual experience seeing new people. Cause I, from what I can tell, it's a lot of turnovers, a lot of new people Mm -hmm. all the time. And I think that's valuable um, to note, like going out um, in the beginning. Um, I mean, I haven't worked at one, so there might be an RMT that was like, that is not the case, but I feel like I would actually probably work at a a chain of some kind. Yep. Um, I'd probably do my uh, my own stuff always because I always yep. feel like I had my hand in that. Um, and I think that's probably where I would have started out instead of starting at a multidisciplinary clinic. I think um, so too. I, I think I would have swapped it out that way. Um, whereas had you have asked me that question probably like five years ago, it would have been like never in a million years. But now that I'm like a little older and in my business and all of that, I think that's probably where I would have started. So mm-hmm. I'm definitely not knocking anyone who works at those places. No. I think they're actually great. And I mean, like, um, I think we've probably touched on this. Like, I'm usually pretty open to, like, how the cookie crumbles sort of, like, yeah. in my business and personal life. So I'm not even discounting that at some point in my life I won't ever work at those places. Yeah. I mean, I can't see myself ever not working for myself. I've said it a hundred times. I don't know if I could ever actually work for someone ever again, even outside of massage therapy. I don't know if I could be an employee. Uh, I mean, in the midst of all this COVID stuff, it's like, am I ever, am I going to have to go look for an actual, like a real, real job? I say that because like, like I'm not working a real job. Yeah. Yeah, Real job in quotes. Um, I was talking to my husband about that. Actually, I was like, do I have to go find a, like a real like employee job now? Like what's going to happen? And he was just like, oh my God, that's going to, no. You know what I mean? He's like, you might as well just not go back to work. I'm like, I know, I don't think I can do it. So, um, I'm at a place where I don't think I'd ever do anything that I'm doing. Like, I think I always need to be my own brand, even if I'm renting a room in a clinic um, that's bigger than me and bigger than when we're at. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I think I'd start at a, like a chain. Yeah. I think that actually a, isn't a bad opportunity. <laughs> a chain or, or, or one of the spas, which is like, I don't think mm-hmm. I would, would have thought when I graduated that I would ever say that, but like knowing um, how some of the spas, how they run and work again, there's co- pros and cons to both. Uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, to get your hand on, and especially in a spa, like you're not really seeing, that's the one thing you're not really seeing a lot of turnovers, so you're, but in the first year you're getting your hand and you're really solidifying that consent and intake. You're really yeah. solidifying that because you're not really seeing a lot of the same person. And usually in a spa, if you did see the same person, it's been a year or so since you last saw them because yeah. they might come yearly. So you have to go through it all again. So you're really, but you're not really honing that maybe that you're starting a treatment plan, but not following through on the treatment plan. So those are some um, skills to practice on maybe later. But Mm -hmm. yeah, I honestly, I feel like I would. And again, I didn't have any really bad experiences at all in any of these. Like the, I think the worst was, was when the, um, 
the second clinic when I decided to step away when that contract ended and I'll that's public knowledge but um basically the chiropractor that was running and owned the clinic and the business um had an accusation against him with his college that he was found guilty of and he was suspended uh-huh. for seven years and so it was pretty it was within the first year within probably the first six months of me working there that this all came up and he was very honest and very open with his team sat us down before christmas said this is what's going on i go next week for um my hearing we'll know then of what it is and um he sat each person down individually and said like this is what i'm going to let you know and I'm pretty sure he offered all of us that if we wanted to terminate our contracts right then and there we could no penalty on his behalf because this was not any of our faults that what Mm -hmm. he was going through and the clinic was going to have to change hands and everything so I thought for I'm again I'm not going to speculate like I don't know what happened I know that the college found him guilty but I Mm -hmm. that that's none of my business um I just felt how he handled it from a business stance with me, my individual personal experience was very professional. And I don't think many clinics would have done what he did. Mm -hmm. And I I did the same thing. All of my clinics, I gave 30 days or more notice that I was leaving. And I had a little paper for each client. I had, think I had one in my office. And then when they led left, I gave them a handout saying, you can stay on the car. The other massage therapist is still staying in this clinic, but here's my contact info. If you need me for any information or um, if you are looking for me here, I am. So um, yeah, like I don't think in any of my experiences, that I had any bad experiences with that. Um, but I still think I might've even worked part-time in one of these and maybe in a clinic or, or in, sorry, in a spa or a, a chain and then did something on the side myself. But, uh, but nonetheless, what I did led me to where I am now. And I am extremely happy with where I am now. Um, I think one of the biggest takeaways from this is just to do your own pro con list. I tried to sit down when we first started talking about this idea and write a pro con list of like clinic versus self pro con list. And my uh, partner and I were, talking on the walk on our walk with the dog and I was like I don't know how to write this pro con list and he's like well you're only writing it from your side that's yeah how, that's how a pro con list works from your own experience you can't you know your experience doesn't translate to others experience so how can you write a pro con list for somebody else he's like just tell your experience and yeah and, and some facts right and let people write their own uh, pro con list so mm-hmm. but I think one of the biggest takeaways is that RMTs you, you said it a few times need to realize their worth and realize their their pillar in our healthcare industry mm-hmm. uh, and that we can stand alone and that we need to work together more and not work against each other. I f- and maybe, maybe there's a correlation to this, um, even though correlation doesn't always mean causation, but that I find it's the same in, in the female world that we're put it, pitted against each other a lot and we need to put that aside. And yes. uh, I'm feeling a big push with females that um, like it, it's community over competition. Yes. And that we need to work together and um, we, you know, competing is actually dragging us all down where we could all be succeeding in our own ways if we all just held each other up. And maybe there's a correlation causation because we're in a female dominated industry I'm not going to say yes or no to that but I feel as massage therapists it's just, it is very similar in the sense of um, there's enough clientele to go around there's enough business to go around we need to start supporting each other we need to stop feeling like we're competition mm-hmm. each for each therapist has a different skill set that will work with a different clientele and there's times where yeah I, I don't do acupuncture and so I say you know go see Nicole because I don't do acupuncture right so mm-hmm. um, I've referred to other RTs that work a lot more closely with children and pre and postpartum I yes. have experience with that but they have so much more, Way more. <laughs> so I'm gonna refer you like over to them and I have no problem with that because you and I I can I know I can speak on both of our behalfs with this is we're not money driven money focused when it comes to our business we are client focused I want to it bothers me at night if I know that like 
I'm just missing some key part of some like to get that client feeling that much better. And I know that another therapist could possibly do it. There's not a hesitation in my mind that I'm referring them to that because that's what's important to me. Absolutely. Yeah. You look after the clients and the the bottom line looks after looks after mm-hmm. itself. And yeah. I saw that over and over and over again um, in any cl- clinic I worked at you know what I mean? Um, starting over again, like a few times, like in 10 years, I've started over three, three times, I guess. Um, so not completely, but definitely started over. Um, so it, uh, it definitely is. And I don't know, this quote kind of came into my head because I, it was actually at a clinic that I used to work at, um, which is interesting. Um, but, uh, the, the quote was long after people remember what you said, they remember how you feel, Mm -hmm. uh, how they made you feel. So like, uh, it, it's, I think, I think the, a lot of the like, um, competition that you say come like happens is uh, external. Cause I felt none of that when I was in mm-hmm. school. No. Um, and then I went out to find a job and it sort of became, um, this thing. Although nowadays you can probably find like an uneven day, like a hundred posts about like clinics looking for RMTs. So yeah. we're hot commodity and <laughs> Yeah. Um, and I, I found, I found a lot of clinics being like, why, why won't RMTs come? Why don't they stay? Why is there so much overturn? And I'm like, I'm going to say it like right now it's because we don't, we don't get what we deserve. Um, yep. often yep. a lot of RMT, a lot of great RMTs leave otherwise great clinics because they are not getting the compensation they need. And at some point, um, that makes them feel not valued. Um, uh, I can't really speak for them, but I feel like if they knew that just giving me um, two and a half percent more of what I was, of what they were taking, giving it to me would have kept me. Um, If they had uh, taken that, I would have stayed. I think they probably would have chose that over me walking. Um, Mm -hmm. We had a really great chemistry. It was really sad uh, (laughs) for me to leave that last clinic I was at. I mean, silver lining is I am now where I'm at and this is the Mm -hmm. best ever. Um, But uh, that place was, that was like, I was going to stay. That was my place. I felt really good there in all aspects. So um, yeah, if any clinic owners or any RM, or RMTs or anybody who owns a place that has RMTs, like take that to it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, your bottom line is your bottom line. But um, if you're expecting that your RMTs are going to be the ones to like pay your bills, those are probably... Yeah. That's probably not a good business model. No. Um, just throwing it out there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know any RMT who likes to feel like they're the ones paying all the bills. Um, no, for sure. Nobody we don't... wants to feel like the workhorse. And, yeah. and essentially sharing the overhead, which is basically an office share is what we do. And mm-hmm. sharing that overhead puts more money in each other's pockets. Pockets. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, a lot of chiropractic that own clinics a lot of just clinic owners in general in my experience feel like RMTs don't have mm-hmm. any knowledge of business so it's really easy to pull the wool over their eyes yeah. so RMTs you need to like start doing some mm-hmm. research you need to start like educating yourself and I'll say that I felt pretty educated um signing contracts um especially with like the last one that didn't go well um especially when it came to certain like expectations as us legally as healthcare practitioners, because I've worked with the CMTO. Mm-hmm. Um, I've worked on the ICRC, uh, quality assurance and appeals committee. Like I've done, I've been in it. I was in it for four years and I was in it while I worked there. And before I started signing that contract. So I felt like I knew what was mm-hmm. in the air and what would be expected. And it still didn't fall out the way I expected. Yeah. So, um, I mean, life happens. Yeah. Um, but I, I learned a lot from it and, uh, yeah. So I, yeah, there's lots of great things about all of mm-hmm. the different places that we mentioned. Um, I could see myself working in like a bunch of different scenarios, um, yeah. now that I've been out on my own. Um, but I think the one we're in is good for us for now. I think so too. I and I'm so really too. excited when we're allowed to go back to yes. it. <laughs> so excited. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I, I just I wanted know- to add to that, um, so when you're saying to RMTs out there, also like, yeah, educate yourself, but also don't be afraid to talk to other RMTs. Don't 
like I know you might feel intimidated to jump on the the Facebook groups there because everybody's got mm-hmm. an opinion about everything, but but maybe reach out to your community based networks. If you're listening in the Durham area, yes. reach out to me directly. I'm the coordinator in our area and we have a really great group together. Um, a lot of them are very acknowledgeable. They are either serving served or are serving with the CMTO. A lot of them have been teachers or a part of the education of massage therapy in the area in Toronto. Um, some are a part of uh, independent business um, committees as well. So reach out or and reach out to me and Nicole if you're looking for you have questions we'll answer them and if we can't answer them we'll forward you on so Absolutely. talk to each other lean on each other that's what we're here for so um yeah hopefully that was good some good yeah, info some good I ranting hope so, I hope so. any uh, any wrap-up points you want to hit home um no, not really. I think we touched them all. Know your worth. Um, yeah. Know that if you start in a place, it doesn't mean that has to be where you end up. Know that yeah. you can go from being in a clinic to being on your own to being out of the profession to coming back. Like we have such a freedom in our in our profession, and that I think what draws a lot of people into it. And then they get into it, and then they feel like that wasn't actually reality. But I feel like it is. We just really have to not jump all over. Mm-hmm. all of the just because yeah. something's not right for you doesn't mean it's not right for someone else um but... or right for you in a different time in your life that's exactly, exactly. It. I think I... I um not to go back down a, a hole but I think when I started it I was so very narrow-sighted and it was like well these I'm in multiple disciplinary clinics and they're not working therefore I shouldn't be in massage no no no, no. go explore those other options and you can and there's so many ebbs and flows in your life and ebbs and flows in this career that just even if it's like, okay, I'm just going to go work for a massage chain for a bit. It's not my like angle. Um, that's fine. That's mm-hmm. completely fine because clients will follow you. And even if you stayed in one place, clients will drop off and come back just the same way as if you switched yeah. where you're, what your working model business model looks like. So yeah, um, that's a good point actually. Yeah. Um, a lot of RMTs worry about like the clients and following them. They'll follow when yeah. if they need to if their life brings them back yeah. to you I yeah. think you've actually had like a client or two that had seen me at a, at a different clinic in the past and they walk in and they're like they see my yeah. name on the wall they're like wait a minute that's not you and you're like no and it's like I used to see her like way back yeah. in the day but now they see you but it was like six years ago at a different place in time in my life they were a client of mine you know yeah. what I mean and somehow yeah. randomly they like come back and it's funny that they're in yeah. the clinic and I never see them but anyway it's like um <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. just like tell Nicole I say hi or whatever right like it's uh it's a it's really neat I think um you gotta, you have to have two separate halves of your brain. There's like a yeah. business piece and then there's like the health therapist yeah. piece. And um, yeah, it's, it's hard. So it's, it's a juggle, but I, yeah. I don't know. It's good. I wouldn't yeah. change it. <laughs> Perfect. So support each other and know your worth. That's what we're sending you off with today. So. Yes, we are. Thank you definitely for listening. Um, what, um, what do you got in your mug over there? I have a white chocolate souffle oh. tea. Yeah, oh. it's from Steep Tea. I'm going to have to bring you some. I forgot oh. I even had it. <laughs> it's yes. amazing. It tastes like white chocolate souffle. <laughs> but is it's it good. caffeine free tonight, Nicole? I don't even know. <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. That's okay, though. <laughs> You're your own worst enemy with that. <laughs> I know. I don't even know if I have any herbal, yeah. like caffeine-free tea oh, in my right. house right now. I have a toddler. If I'm drinking something, it's to have caffeine <laughs> these days. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and how about you, hon? What are you drinking? I'm drinking my nightly tea. I pre I have this every night. I think I drink it another night too. Um, mm-hmm. It's peppermint amore. It's oh. just straight up just peppermint leaves and That's I awesome. love it some people think it's a little peppermint maybe you shouldn't have before bed but I we've gotten in the habit of um make dinner clean up from dinner cup of tea the both of us and then probably a couple hours later I'm off to bed so That's oh, this, super cute this is, <laughs> I like once I've had this tea it's like okay it's bedtime Time for bed. perfect <laughs> I love it and on that note since it's late we will <laughs> wrap it up have a boss or to be the boss. If you know
know someone who would enjoy this podcast as much as you did, be sure to send them the link. You can also spread more love by sharing a screenshot of this episode on your Instagram stories and tag at RiversRMT. We would also be thrilled if you subscribe to the MTP family. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please leave us a review or you can leave us a voice memo on Anchor. We'd love to hear from you. See you on our next episode. Be kind.